know this looks better with or without the lights. But welcome back to my channel. I'm very excited to be here today because I'm finally back with a proper nail video. And excuse me if I sound nasally. <coughs> I'm sick. Boo, you whore. This is a gel extension video. It's absolutely my favorite type of nails to do. And I'll be showing you how to do a super easy, beginner-friendly fall nail design, as well as some new application methods. So if you do like this nail content, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. And let's just get right into it. Okay, so I've already done my cuticle care off camera. We're jumping right into nail care. I do have a shorts video up on how I remove my last set that I had on for over a month, but I'm going in with my bonder and my primer. These are both from a prey. And for the bonder, I make sure to kind of like saturate my nails because the bonder is going to remove those oils. It's kind of like a dehydrator. Some people also use isopropyl alcohol in place of a bonder. And then for the primer, I try not to like drain wrench my nails but just make sure that they're all coated evenly then for the nail tips I go in with a gel X tip primer I am using the long coffin sculpted nail tips from a prey and this primer on the inside of the nail tip is going to etch the inside of the nail tip which means it's going to give it that gritty texture and make it hold to your nail and hold to the glue way better and this will help with retention I don't think you necessarily need to buy this specific gel X primer I've seen plenty of people use regular the nail primer like the gold one I just used on my natural nails for this step as well also if you don't have a primer which I do think primer and bonder are super important for gel extensions especially but you can also just use a e-file to file the inside of the nail tip to get that same gritty and like rough texture So this is something new I'm trying today. I'm basically filing around the cuticle area of the nail tip using a sanding band. I believe this is like a medium grit one. And I'm just trying to thin out that area that's going to lay on my cuticles. The point of this is to give it a more natural looking effect. Like these nails really grew out of your own cuticles, you know? This should also help with the retention of your nails and any lifting problems because it's gonna give it a more seamless blend between your natural nail and the nail tip. So now that nail prep is done for my nails and the nail tips, I'm gonna go in and start applying these gel extensions. Today I'm using the Savvy Land Gel Extension Glue. I've been loving this one. I used to only use the Apray brand, but this one is just as good and it's cheaper. I'll have everything that I use in this video linked down below, but I do get this off Amazon. So this is also something new that I'm trying today. I have tried it on my friend in my last nail video, but I'm doing it for the first time on myself. I'm just applying a thin layer of the nail extension extension glue onto my natural nails before I apply the nail tips. I never used to do this but I've been watching a lot of nail videos and I see people do this and I think this may be a step I've been missing on why sometimes my nails don't last as long. So I'm going to start testing this method out but before I cure this I do use some isopropyl alcohol to make sure I don't have any extra gel on the skin around my nails. So for the extensions, I use that same nail extension glue and I just coat the inside of the extension where it's going to sit on my nail bed. And then once I coat that area, I kind of just drop a blob of gel down the center of it. And this method has helped me with making sure that I have the whole entire nail extension filled properly. If you don't have enough gel in your nail tip, you're gonna have air bubbles, which is gonna lead to lifting and your nails popping off. And also if you put too much, it's going to, it's not the end of the world because you can always clean it up at the end, but it's 
it's going to just squirt out if you put too much so you really have to find the right balance of how much gel you should use which just takes practice also this gooseneck lamp that i use to flash cure my nails is a lifesaver if you're doing your own nails i'll link it down below i got this one from the brand outcome but i've seen a bunch of them on amazon i think i paid 40 bucks for mine but there's a ton of cheaper versions of these this one works really well and i would recommend but i don't know there might be something cheaper that works just as good But this gooseneck lamp is definitely only for flash curing your nails and flash curing means just curing your nails for 10 to 15 seconds enough so that the nail tip is set and you can move on to the next nail and kind of just have a faster process but once you're done applying all of the nail tips on at least one hand make sure that you stick that hand underneath the full uv slash led lamp i definitely recommend investing in a full lamp if you are trying to do gel extensions at home So I finished applying all the nail tips and here are what they look like. Honestly, this was a pretty clean application except for my ring finger. I don't know what happened, but there was so much extra gel by my cuticle. Moving on to filing and shaping my nails. These were long coffin nails. I wanted them to be more medium. I do really like how the Apray Sculpted nails have a really good apex. So that was good, but I definitely wanted them to be shorter. So I'm just using my nail tip cutter and kind of measuring by eye how long I want them to be and to make sure they each match. I do see people use these really cool tip cutters that measure it for you, which is something I need to invest in because it just makes sure that all of your nails are actually the same size versus what I'm doing here. As I mentioned, I did have some extra gel that spilled out while I was applying, so I'm just using this kind of cylinder shape. It's definitely a flathead cuticle bit to remove that gel. You guys can see on the ring finger, there's so much gel that comes off. And then the other fingers, I'm just kind of passing it through just to make sure there isn't any that I might have missed. After that, I'm using my sanding band and my e-file to buff my nails. You definitely don't need the e-file to do this. You could just use a buffing block, but I think it makes it easier with the e-file. And I'm also just filing the tips to make sure everything's nice and smooth. And now let's get into this cute little fall design. Before we even get started, do you guys see what I didn't do? I stopped using base coat because honestly, it kind of just wastes time. And I've been watching so many, like that's all I do. I watch nail videos all day long and I see girls never using base coat. And I'm like, huh, this might just be a scam for companies trying to get you to buy more product. Because do you really need base coat if you think about it? Like, I don't think you do. And I haven't been using it and my nails have been completely fine and it saves so much time. So so yeah, I do not do base coat anymore over here. I'm just going straight in with my nude base color. So I'm using this pinkish nude color from the brand Camouflage Polish. It is called Simplicity. Um, I love her polishes, by the way. She has a ton of different nude colors. She's a small business, black owned, veteran owned business. You guys should definitely support. I'll leave her link down in the description box below. So I gathered all of the fall colors I could find in my little collection and all I had was these three or four colors so this is what I'm using today. I think I only ended up using three but I'm basically just doing a very abstract design. Abstract designs are my favorite because they don't have to be perfect in order for them to look good and also all of your nails don't have to be matching in order for the design to make sense or for it to look good. 
So for the design, I just started painting on these little abstract blobs and shapes. I would fill them in and then I created lines to outline the blobs or just lines to overlay the blobs and really was just kind of freestyling this. I did initially have an inspo pick, but I kind of just ended up doing my own thing. It didn't look anything like the inspo pick, but I think that's the good thing about inspo pick because it just gets your ideas flowing and it doesn't have to be like an actual recreation of somebody's design. You can just draw inspiration even if it's just the colors that they use you can see a picture and be inspired by their color palette and you know use that to create your nail set So my nails are done, but we cannot finish a nail set without applying some cuticle oil to rehydrate your skin and the cuticle area. Rub it all in, make sure everything's nice and moisturized. And then we have our final nail look. I think it came out so cute. I mean, I feel like I like all of my nails for the most part. Sometimes I really don't, but I think these were really cute. And what I liked even more than the design on this set is the application. I feel like my cuticles look so nice and clean. I just think this set came out really nice and clean, looks real professional, and we all know I'm not a professional over here. If you didn't know, I have no formal training or anything. I am completely self-taught. We're back. I thought about getting cute for this video, but I figured my face wouldn't be in it anyway, so this is why I look like this. So that is it for today's nail video. I hope it was helpful if you were looking for a how-to video or if you were looking for like some fall nail design inspo. But I will be back with more nail videos. I know I always say that, but I promise you more nail videos will be coming very soon. Okay, but thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye